Excellency Samia Sululu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellency Dr. Hussein Ali Mwinyi, President of Zanzibar, Chair of the Revolutionary Council and Select Settler of the Mkapa Foundation. Your Excellency Philip Isidori Mpango, Vice President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Excellencies, former presidents of the United Republic of Tanzania and Revolutionary Government of Zanzibar. Your Excellency Othman Masood, first Vice President of Z Zanzibar. Your Excellency Ahmed Suleiman Dula, second Vice President of Zanzibar. Honorable Zuberi Ma Maulid, Speaker of the House of the Representatives. Honorable Mama Anne Nkapa, former First Lady and a, a widow of the President Benjamin William Kappa. Honorable Marian Mi Mariam Mini, First Lady of Zanzibar. Mama Fatma Karume and former First Ladies. Honorable Ministers, Permanent Secretaries and Senior Government Officials. Chair and members of the Mkapa Foundation, Excellence Ambassadors, High Commissioners, and members of the Diplomatic Corps. I notice also this uh, His Excellency Bilal, Vice President of the Third Republic, uh, of the Third Government of Tanzania, is also here, I recognize him, and uh, I will say all protocol observed so that we don't leave anyone out. Uh, thank you for keeping Reminding people that I spoke once at the OAU in Kiswahili in my open remarks, that was just to remind the people that uh, Kiswahili was an official lingu language uh, of the OAU. And uh, people then believed that I knew how to speak Kiswahili. But uh, that is not as much true as you think, I cannot deliver my speech in Kiswahili. So I'm going to deliver it in English. I may speak Kiswahili Barabarani. Kubabaisha. <laughs> and people may think that I know Kiswahili. Like in Sio Ivo. I would like to start my remarks by thanking His Excellency Dr. Hussein Ali Mwinyi, the settler of the Mkapa Foundation and the president of Zanzibar and chairman of the Revolutionary Council for the kind invitation he addressed to me to participate in this second symposium in homage of my friend, comrade, and colleague the third president of the United Republic of Tanzania, His Excellency Benjamin William Kappa. Because I believe that uh, many of you might be putting uh, the question, make how these two became friends. I would like to take the minutes you gave me to recall how I and Ben became friends. Yes, Ben. That's how I called him. And he called him me Joachim. Joachim. Because he could not pronounce Joaquim as we do in Portuguese. <laughs> That 
The first period of relationship occurred in the year 1966. That was a year when problems, seemingly internal problems in the Mozambique Liberation Front were beginning to deserve a focused attention and more mobilization work both among the Mozambican people and the Tanzanian people and the world in general. The enemies of our struggle for independence were acting intensively within our ranks through their psychosocial welfare. It was uh, something uh, that in the Portuguese uh, regime they had created uh, to combat us, which was called psychosocial organization. We freely performed the necessary mobilization among us, militants and the whole people at large to bring up our awareness about the sneaky ways the enemy was using to attack us. But we needed to get our brothers in Tanzania to be also in alert, to understand what would seem merely internal problems with just internal causes, but they were not. We wanted the Tanzanian sisters and brothers to keep their solidarity to our struggle always high. Diversionist maneuvers had to be denounced and combated. We were keen to explain and sensitize as much as possible, as much as we could, the leadership of Tanu and Afro Shirazi Party so that the alert could be extended to the rest of the organs and the structures of the parties, to their social organizations and institutions, and therefore to the whole population of Tanzania. And for that, the media was, a great, was of great importance. Benjamin Kappa, then, at that period, was the managing direct, uh, editor of the two Tanu Party newspapers, the Nationalist in English language and Uhuru in Kiswahili. His capacity of listening and making deep and careful analysis of events brought to his, no, uh, uh, I mean, his capacity of listening and making deep and careful analysis of events which were brought to his knowledge directly or through his journalists like Ferdinand Rohinda, Nsaka Ise, John Tesha, and others made his newspapers to deliver to the readers of the, to the readers a good coverage of our struggle with fairness and objectivity. His team of journalists never wavered in championing the cause of African liberation. Looking back, the level of the two newspapers under his editorship was by any standards very high. The armed struggle front for the, uh, the armed struggle of the front for liberation of Mozambique was adding successes upon successes in such a way that in 1966, we already had some liberated and semi-liberated zones of our country. Although these were victories for us, they were quickly used by the enemy to try to divide our people and win some of our militants in a bid to stop the war. Those were part of the psychosocial war imposed on us. So Ben and his team of journalists fought with us this fight. Ben, besides his personal talents, had assumed the sentiments of Mualimu Julius Kambara Genyerere, who believed that Tanzania would not never be free while, 
one single inch of Africa was under the yoke of colonialism and racial domination. Part of the journalists of the Nationalist and Uhuru became also good friends of Relimu, of Relimu freedom, freedom fighters, and no longer looked at them as refugees. Uh, because in those, those days, uh, it was uh, very difficult. We had to do a lot of job to educate our, our, our brothers and sisters in Tanzania. Because they would look at us and say, ah, who you can be busy, who you? as if we're nothing, nobody. Uh, yeah. So I was saying that these journalists and Ben Kappa himself, they, have a, they had a left the attitude of many academically well-learned persons who looked at the refugees and the freedom fighters as human beings of the lowest class. When Ben was sent to work at the journal Daily News and Sunday News that came out when the Standard became a government paper with that na a new name, Daily News, I met him by chance on the road near the news, newspaper's workshops. I, I, I did not like it. Uh, the way the, the newspaper, the standard, wrote about our struggle. So I complained to him. In fact, I criticized the newspaper for distorting the events of our struggle. Ben listened to me carefully, but looking at me in a way that I could not understand which side he was. And after one question that I answered, he started a comment, which he concluded by, oh, well, anyway. And this expression, he, he would repeat it, anyway. Uh, one would have taken him as an arrogant person an intellectual talking with an under uh, uh, with an under educated who was younger than him i am two years younger than him but as the daily news did no longer make those negative approaches which the standard made i believe that he had exerted his influence then i understood his anyway differently I thought also that his anyway was an expression to respect my opinion, even if he did not fully accept it, to give time to think so that we meet in other conversations, we speak the same language. Maybe I would have taken his views or he would have taken my views, so he would respect. He wanted to remain focused on the important issues I had raised with him, and he had been always like that. Focus on what is important, whether for cooperation, for unity, and so on. The second period of interaction with Ben comes after a long time of separation after the proclamation of the independence of Mozambique, when he became the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Tanzania. First, between the years 1977 and 1980. I was already Minister of Foreign Affairs of Mozambique from the 1st of July 1975, as we proclaimed the independence in June. Of 1975. During this period, our main activity was focused on the work of the frontline states, particularly in support of the struggle of the peoples of Zimbabwe, South Africa, and Namibia, but also the fight 
of the Angolan people against the apartheid invasion and the occupation of parts of the Angolan territory with the aim of impeding the consolidation of the independence of that country that was proclaimed also in 1975. We had to deal with the war of destabilization imposed on Mozambique by the racist regimes through proxy forces composed of Mozambican and Zimbabwean citizens recruited by them. I have enjoyed his deep analysis of the many situations confronting Africa even beyond Southern, Af Southern Africa. When our five frontline heads of state met, we, the, we, the ministers of foreign affairs, had to be capable of producing before the meeting or during the meeting a press statement reflecting parts of their deliberations, which could be rendered public. public which would be rendered public right at the end of the meeting. So we also had to quickly exchange views about the situation in our countries in Southern Africa. All the ministers had something to give. Some of us were freedom fighters who had no training in the diplomatic areas, but they had the empiric knowledge in some cases, an experience of negotiating with the enemy and others who, like Ben, were well trained in the area of international relations and in the area of journalism and the, in the area of the English uh, language. There, we could benefit from the capacity of a synthesis, synthesis and quick drafting of Ben. But Ben was not just a good writer. He was a good speaker who thought deeply before he delivered his, his speech. Always his speech, always based on very clear principles. His speeches did not go in circles or sp spirals when he addressed the enemy or the adversary, he was direct and clear without losing the opportunity of delighting the English-speaking peoples with his refined English that the University of Makerere had given him. He was one of the most updated with the political and security situations of all the African countries, thanks to his capacity of quick reading, reading and interpretation. We had to deal with the negotiations between the Zimbabwe movements and the colonial power, Great Britain. We, we, we had to decide the, the front line, Anglo, uh, on one side, and the other side, Great Britain. Besides what we had uh, then in the five frontline states with the five permanent members of the Security Council, we joked that we were the two, the two gangs of five. And that was about Namibia, the second one. So we had to deal with these uh, negotiations on one hand with Britain and the other hand among the liberation movements and the minority racist regime of Jan Smith, which took us up to Lancaster House where the decision went, was made. We were equal states, but the role of Mwali Munyerere, Kenneth Kaunda, and Samora Michelle were preeminent. 
when it came to their capacity of leverage on the liberation movements of Zimbabwe and on the big powers of the West, but also the East. We, as foreign ministers, had to play the same role as our heads of state, but at our level, particularly when we went to participate in meetings without our heads of state. The responsibility was bigger for Ben Kappa because he represented the chairman. From frontline states, Sadek was born in 1980, while Ben was still foreign minister. At that year, he was given other functions. When we came back as foreign minister in 1984 to 1990, I worked with him also as foreign minister from 84 until 86, when I became head of state, 1986. But even after that, we continued to work friendly. In that period, although the problem of destabilization wars continued in Mozambique and in Angola, and apartheid persisted in South Africa and Namibia, other problems had to be attended to. The problems of development, poverty, hunger, climate changes, relationship between the economic north and the economic south, the problems of international trade, and so on, are examples of those Ben Mkapa was able to navigate in with some easiness. Now, not only thanks to his academic preparedness, but also thanks to his long experience of having represented his country in other countries of Africa and abroad. Finally, there was the last but one period that we worked together. That was when both we were heads of state. I was head of state since 1986. He joined me at that level in 1995. It was a period that the continent had to find the most correct ways to deal with the effects of globalization, liberalization, and had to find ways to preserve as much as possible the freedom, independence, and sovereignty of its peoples and states. At that time, weakened by the imposed wars with an increasing dependency on the so-called donors, today named partners, more and more under the control of the international financial institutions, all the countries had to undertake changes in all its behaviors to become aligned with only the policies and principles that were acceptable to those who in, in the world detained the power. Because if you said no, they say, okay, go ahead, but we are out. No more relations. It was necessary to be courageous, to take decisions and measures to change the path and the direction of our policies. Sometimes we could sense the dangers, but we could not dodge them. We had to face them. We had to find ways to mitigate its bad effects while continuing to fight for better days. And this comprised the need of working together in our Southern Africa region, in our continent, in the whole economic South. I may say that although traditionally Mozambique in many occasions looked for the inspiration coming uh, 
uh, and example coming from Tanzania in its develop de developmental processes and in the diplomatic activity, this time due to the difficult circumstances Mozambique lived, lived in since the proclamation of its independence, characterized by a highly destructive destabilization war and frequent natural disasters that Tanzania was not experiencing, Mozambique was the first to introduce changes. Consultations and exchange of views of opinions between the two countries were made before the changes were affected. Short, short of better advice, the changes took place. Taking such decisions required courage. One had to understand that if he does not become the owner of his process of change, foreign powers would impose the changes on him and he would therefore absolutely lose control of the affairs. So it was better to change by yourself before they force you to change and exert more control on you. Ben did study the situation look, and looked at what we had already done in Mozambique, designed his own model, and also courage, courageously introduced changes. I, I am speaking of li li liberalization, market economy, multi-party system, the relations with several international institutions or instruments for international cooperation. He also took the courage to find ways to introduce changes in the, in, in, in the behaviors of his citizens. Although traditionally Mozambique was inspired by Tanzania, in the process of development, Ben Mukapa, in several occasions, acknowledged, acknowledged his admiration for what we were doing as if he was discovering new sources of inspiration. And when he visited our country, he would frequently exclaim, Jamani, Nini, Nihodari, Nihodari Sana, which in English stands for my people. You are our diary. It is you are courageous, brave, valiant, efficient, capable. Yet, when I visited Tanzania after he became president, I could see tremendous development, and it gave me the desire to say the same, the same word to him. Wewe ni diary. particularly in what concerns efficiency. It was efficient in what he was doing, including this work of changing the mentalities of the people. I understand that he did not fully meet all his dreams, but he left a solid basis for further successes. That's why what we witnessed when Jakaya Kikwetu took over and when uh, President Magufuri took over and now Mama Seloho taking over and we see always Tanzania in progress. So he left a lot. I would like to say that I admired especially the good governance he displayed and his integrity so much that before I received the Mo Ibrahim Prize, I, without knowing that uh, someone was uh, thinking of me as a possible candidate or laureate, in answering to a question, 
I could suggest here's a candidate of the prize Benjamin Kappa. I said I regret that because Benjamin Kappa is still in exercise, cannot be a candidate. That were the rules. I was thinking who is the leader who could be uh, deserve a prize as, as they are describing it. Actually, they, they, those who put in the questions, they, they were thinking about me. I, I discovered it later. Uh, and uh, they wanted to know if I knew something about it. Uh, but I, I kept on looking around as who could be possibly a laureate of such a prize. And I said, Ben Mkapa. But he is still in, in, in power and the, 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 the criteria was that he should have left the government. He had a good governance. The last period of our interaction now was when he left the presidency and joined me as a member of the forum for former African heads of state and governments and other leaders, Africa Forum, of which I am the chairman. Gave a great, he gave a great contribution to the African Union in many aspects, including peacemaking and peace building. Besides this, he was part of the group of African personalities who were champions in the combat against HIV AIDS. We created this group together. President Kaunda himself, President, uh, at the first meeting was in, at, at, uh, at uh, Victoria Falls. In, 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 in the Zamb Zambia, Zambian site, Moshotunya. And uh, later, it was President Mohai who became the, the leader of that group of the champions to combat AIDS. But later, the chairmanship remained with uh, His Excellency Nkalema Petrus Munkanti as chairperson of the Champions for AIDS, Free Generation, who in this regard had this to say on behalf of the champions. I prefer to quote because this is the same sentiment that we, the champions, have about Mkap on this subject. And I quote, His Excellency Benjamin William Kappa was an outstanding member of the champions for an AIDS-free generation. His selfless commitment to the global and regional efforts to end AIDS as a public health threat are evident in his unwavering position that inspired our leaders to commit to ending AIDS as a public health threat in Africa. It is seen in his passion and engagement of issues of sustain sustainability and financing the AIDS response and for health building the continent's future through investment in young people, their health and education and addressing social and political de determinants of the epidemic and inequalities. I may add to this that Ben believed that prevention, including male circumcision, was the only efficient and cheap way to follow in order to defeat AIDS. He said, 
prevention is better than cure. You are. And he would say, we have to speak about this issue with the appropriate, the, the, the words without, without fear. To call the things by their names. How the disease comes and to be in, so that people understand. We acted like that together. We are the champions. Went to different countries, including the United States of America, where we went there. I hope that I gave you the essential of what brought me and, and uh, I mean, what brought Ben and I together and why I will always remember him as a friend, a comrade, and a colleague. Thank you.